Barak at the Yahweh, Barak at the Yahweh Shai, Barak at the Yahweh, Barak at the Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakadash, Barak at Thah, bless you, Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father, Barak at Thah, bless you, Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, by Hashem Rakadash, in the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, all right, Shalom wa Barakim, all right, to the hopeful elect. This is Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Okay, so the, the, the disciples, the followers of Yahweh Shai, they knew back then in the time of Acts and us as hopeful, elect hopeful disciples of the Lord in these times, we know, all right, that in order to enter into the kingdom of the Most High, you must go through much tribulation. All right. We have to catch hell. Okay. Now, this is the book of. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Jeremiah chapter 30. Seventh verse it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Okay. So we have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? The scriptures say, this is uh, the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse uh, 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So the righteous, the remnant whom the Lord is going to save, they're going to be sca saved scarcely. All right, they're going to go through the hour of martial law. They're going to be uh, in, in the time when the when the so-called white man implements the mark of the beast, okay, they're gonna go through trials and tribulations to enter into that king to the kingdom of the Most High. All right, Jeremiah thirty and seven. I want to get some Hebrew. All right, time of Jacob's trouble. So it says, "But he shall be saved out of it." Who's he? All right, the remnant of Israel, because the whole nation isn't gonna be saved in these times. All right, but the elect, the one third. Okay, I'm getting the uh, the word for trouble. Okay. The Hebrew word, you look at the top, it's Strong's H6869. It's a Taza Ra Ha. Taza Ra. Altogether, it's Taza Ra. All right, which means straits, distress, trouble, vexer, okay? Affliction, tribulation, anguish, adversity. All right, we have to go through the time of adversity. We have to go through the time of affliction, okay? Straits. Straight means difficulties. All right. This is what we have to go through in order to get to the kingdom of the Most High, in order to receive that salvation that is promised. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. It says, Enter ye at the straight gate. Okay. And one of the definitions for Tazara, which is trouble in Hebrew, was straits. All right. And straight. All right. We look that up real quick. If it be of the Lord's will. Okay. It says the definition of straight. It says a narrow passage. Okay. That's not it. All right. Matter of fact, we'll just go into it. Okay. The Greek. All right. Narrow, straight. Okay. I can't find it right now. All right, but straight literally just means difficulty, all right? It means narrow, yes, but it also means difficulty, difficult path, all right? It says, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, all right? The scriptures um, say in the book of uh, Second Ezra, just grab it real quick, Okay? Second Ezra, chapter 8, and verse 3, it says, There be many created, but few shall be saved. All right? Few are going to be saved. This is Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 14. Then answered I and said, I have said before and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. All right? So when it says that many there be that go there at the, the path of destruction, many people are going to die, all right, in, in this time that we're entering in known as Jacob's trouble, whether that be through the famine, the pestilence, 
all right? The all diverse manners of death, the wild beasts, or whether it be the climax, all right, when the Lord comes and he brings fire through the thermonuclear missiles in World War III or through the, the heat of the angels, okay? But many are going to die, all right? Because only few are able to enter in that straight gate. This is verse 14. It says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, all right? Few there be that find it, all right? The elect, the one-third, all right? The remnant whom the Lord has blessed before the world has begun, all right? You have to be chosen from the foundation to be able to get through the times that are about to come to pass, to be able to go through the tribulation that was preordained, okay? So Ephesians chapter 1, Verse four, verse three, blessed be the God and power and, and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shai, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, according as He have chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Okay, it's the it's the heavenly Father's good pleasure. To save the remnant, to save the one third, all right? Those that sigh and cry for the abomination that's be done in the midst of, all right? We're going to be saved, Lord's will, that we're part of the elect, that small remnant, that small number, all right? This is uh, back in the Apocrypha, all right? This is Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, all right? It, it goes hand in hand with Second Ezra, with, with Matthew, the seventh chapter. This is Second Ezra, chapter seven. And I'm um, going to read verse 6. It says, There is also another thing. A city is built. All right. And that city that is built is the kingdom of heaven. All right. And that's what we're fighting for. All right. The scriptures say, um, I reckon. Let me just grab it real quick. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. All right. And verse 17. For our light affliction, so the straight gate that we go through, all the hell that we go through, the trials and tribulations that we go through, even Jacob's trouble that we have to go through is known in the scriptures as a light affliction. OK, it says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a, a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. OK. What we're going to receive through going through this affliction are right, is far greater than. Than the actual affliction, even though right now in the moment, in the present time, it seems very grievous. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. It says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. All right. The hell that we're catching that we're going to that we're going to go through in the future and that we're going through right now is very grievous. It says, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. All right. We're better. We're better creatures. All right. We're going to be that that pure gold. All right. The Lord's putting us through this, the fire, this uh, purifying process all right, to make us unto fine gold. All right. And I'm going to get that. But let me get this real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter eight, because this is what I actually quoted, not second Corinthians. This is Romans, chapter eight, verse 17. Uh, uh, I'm going to read verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay? So the Lord is going to bless us with glory, everlasting glory. We're going to have riches, fame, renown after we go through the sufferings that our Lord Yahweh Shai went through. All right? But the sufferings that we're going through right now, this present time, is not comparable to the actual riches and glory which we're going to receive for being faithful unto the Lord. All right? Now, this is Sirach. Book of Sirach. All right, the Book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter two, in the fifth verse, it says, "For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity." So, if you're an acceptable man, you're liking on the fine gold. If you're part of the elect, you're liking on the gold unto the heavenly Father. The Lord said that the uh, I'll make a man like the fine gold, even the gold of Ophir. All right, so uh, as gold. OK, when you go through fire. All right. And it says that except in the furnace of adversity, adversity is that fire. You go through adversity. It's going to make you better. All right. It's going to make us perfect. All right. 
This is the, the book of um, Because what we're seeking after The Lord is putting the elect Through all this hell Through the adversity of tribulation So that they can become perfect Alright This is Proverbs chapter 4 Verse 18 It says But the path of the just Is as the shining light And shineth more and more Unto the perfect day Okay That perfect day is when Yahweh Shai makes his return Alright And we're going to be perfect in spirit Okay, this is uh, for uh, first John 3, I believe. Uh, I'll read it. This is first John 3 and 3. I'll read from the top first John 3 and 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. All right, because the world doesn't know the Heavenly Father, but we know the Heavenly Father, we're persecuted because of it. They call us evil because they don't know the Lord. All right, but the Lord has blessed us that we could be the sons of, we call the sons of the Heavenly Father, Yahshua Allah. Verse 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yahweh is perfect. He's in his incorruptible body. He's in his glorified state. And when he returns, we're going to be like him. All right. Verse three, it says, and every man that had this hope and him purified himself, even as he is pure. All right. We're going to be pure, whole, sound. All right. Perfect. OK, we're going to be whole. And that's what we're seeking for. We're seeking for healing. That's the whole purpose of salvation. So Malachi chapter four, verse two, it says, but unto you that fear my name. Shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. All right, the Lord is going to heal us. All right, we're going to be delivered from this, these fleshly bodies. All right, and we're also going to be uh, brought into our own land. All right, we're going to dwell safely in the in the land of Israel, not worrying about our our, our enemies because they're going to be subjugated under us. Let me finish off the second Ezra, the second Ezra seven and six. There's also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. That's the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. Okay? So to get to the kingdom of heaven, you have to go through this narrow entrance. On the right hand, it says uh, there's a fire. So if you fall, you're going to burn up. On the left hand, there's a deep water. So if you fall, you're going to drown. It says... and one only path between them both even between the fire and the water so small that there could but one man go there at once all right that's right that's why the lord calls us soldiers soldiers going back to solitary all right because this salvation this fight this walk that we go through it's lonely it's individual the scriptures say work out your own salvation in fear and trembling all right and right here in second Corinthians seven it says that only one man at a time can walk that path all right verse nine it says, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, all right, are we not heirs? All right, we're heirs to the kingdom of heaven as Israelites. We're princes. Is not a prince an heir to the to the throne? All right, we're heirs to the kingdom of heaven of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So that means that that comes with an inheritance. The inheritance is the actual kingdom and all the goodly things that comes with it. It says, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. If he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So you got to catch hell. You got to go through trials and tribulation in order to actually receive that inheritance, in order to get to the kingdom of heaven. All right. So Lord one, this was an edifying video, an exhortation. I will give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahshai, by Shem Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well.